Good afternoon, Wednesday, July 14th, 2021. Continuing my episode series on baseball players in the Hall of Fame whose career stats are significant, noteworthy, and should be talked about and highlighted. That's what I'm doing in this episode series. You're wondering, why am I doing, let's see, Earl Averill. Some of you may say you haven't heard of him. I have, because I read the Cooperstown Baseball Hall of Fame book, and he's in there. And so I was curious. I read about his stats, and he only played 13 years, played for Cleveland Indians and Detroit Tigers, 1929 to 1941, yet he made the Hall of Fame. How? Well, let's look what he did. He comes in at 27 years old in 1929. That is a late start. Al Kaline started at 18. Some of the other players start at 20, some at 22, some at 24. This could be one of the later ones. I know Ishiro Jazuki was 27 when he started, and he got 3,000 hits. Earl got 2,000 hits in 13 years. 1,669 games. You may say, hey, 2,000 hits. Big deal. Well, if you have 100 hits for 10 years, that's 1,000 hits, right? If you have 200 hits for 10 years, that's 2,000 hits. So he did 2,000 hits in 13 years. So I would say about 175 hits a year average. That's pretty good. Let's look at his career. He comes in 1929 and gets 198 hits his first year and bats 332. You think that's significant? You think that's noteworthy? I do. Second year, 181 hits, 339 average. Third year, 209 hits, 333 average. 1932, he's 30 years old. 198 hits, 314 average. So he's got four 300 seasons in a row. Can he make it five? Yep, 1933. 180 hits, 301. 1934. 187 hits, 313 average. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 300 seasons in a row. Remember, he got a late start. He does pretty well in home runs too. 18 homers, 19 homers, 32 homers in his third year, 143 RBI. 32 homers in his fourth year, 124 RBIs. His sixth year, 31 homers, 113 RBIs. Then he gets 19 homers, 28 homers, 21, 14, 11. So you get about 238 homers in 13 years. That's pretty good. Average about 20 homers a year. He went over 100 RBIs, one, two, three, four, five times, at a high of 143 RBIs. Okay, 1935, 33 years old, 162 hits, that's 288. So he had six 300 seasons in a row, then 288. But he came back in 1936 and had 232 hits and bats 378. Now you know why he's in the Hall of Fame? 1937, 182 hits, 299, so he just missed 300, because now he's got seven, 299 would have been eight. 1938 season, 159 hits, 330 average. So he got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out of eight years, out of 13 years, 300 or better. He had a high of 378, 
He had a 330, a 339, a 332, 333 average during those years. 1939, 37 years old, drops off to 264. 39 season, 273, 40 season, 280, and then his last season, only eight games. So Earl Averell, not a bad player, 1,669 games, 2,019 hits. He went over 200 hits twice, but he was consistent, had 198 hits, twice so that would have been four times then he had 187 and 180 and 182 hits and 181 so if he strings along a little better in those seasons he could have had like about six or seven 200 hit seasons finishes with a career batting average of 318 so I told you I have a book I wrote, right? This is the book. Baseball Perspectives and Assumptions. And what I've been doing is I've been comparing player stats with the games they played and how many hits they got in the games they played. Ed Delante, for example, 1,800 games, 2,500 hits. So he had a 1.41 ratio of hits per game. Every game, 1.41 he averaged. So I've been going down the list, Ty Cobb, Willie Keeler, Jesse Burkett, so forth. I've been going down, i got Joe DiMaggio, Speaker, Gehrig, Medwick, Carew, and I keep going down. And that's how I got to uh, Earl Averill, because he was listed number 32. Now this is my episode, what number is this? Episode 47. So I took some of the other players out of context and highlighted their careers because they were outstanding. But according to my list here, you can see how I did it. I've got Earl, like, number 32 as far as ratio of hits per game. 1.20 hits per game. He only played 1,669 games. If he had played the same amount of games that Pete Rose did, which is the standard I measured according, because Pete Rose, again, played 3,562 games, right, and had 4,256 hits. So what I said, what I'm doing is I'm doing a what-if scenario. What if Earl played 3,562 games? According to his 1.20 hits per game, extrapolate, he would have ended up with 4,290 hits, but he didn't. He only ended up with 2,019 hits because he only played 13 years. But you're wondering why I have Earl number 40, what was it again? Episode 47, that's why. So I'm going to follow along on this list. And so whoever I'm talking about, you will see ratio of hits per game that's how I'm gonna, the order i'm going to be following so next on the list is vladimir guerrero okay so stay tuned for that episode thanks for watching and i am out